What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of our Road to the GOAT series. This time we are restarting in the GOAT League after coming off of back-to-back -back losses with the Utah Jazz against the Portland Trailblazers. So now we are going back with the Atlanta Hawks and hopefully we can get a win with them in this video. The first ever game that I played in the GOAT League was with the Atlanta Hawks in 2K21. So it wasn't too hard to get a victory with them, but we did kind of struggle. But I'm feeling confident that I could win with them once more. And this is an interesting matchup. My opponent has gone with the Washington Wizards. This is not no classic or historic team. This is the current Washington Wizards team. And I like this matchup against the Atlanta Hawks for my opponent because he has Russell Westbrook at the point guard position and you know Trey Young is not the best defender so Westbrook might eat this game and then you also have Bradley Beal who could get buckets so this game might be a little bit tough but nonetheless we still got to try and win the game and hopefully in this league we can go undefeated and get this series over with. So this should be interesting because we never really seen the Washington Wizards like that. The time that I did play with them, it was pretty good. We went up against like some classic Golden State Warrior team, Warriors team, and we end up winning that game pretty convincingly. Bradley Bill, a fun player I like to play with on 2K. So it was fun playing with the Wizards, but unfortunately or fortunately for us, the game does not even start and we are granted with a tier three victory. So this must be a sign that we might go undefeated in this league. So I said after that game, you know what, I'll play another one and see how my luck goes. So now we're back to playing with the Utah Jazz and look at our opponent here. He has the Brooklyn Nets. This is probably even worse than the Portland Trailblazers because the Nets are a tier one team of course and the Jazz, as you know it, and as you've seen in the video, are located in tier two. So this is going to be very tough for me to try and win this game, but we'll see how, how this game goes. So these are some of the settings that I go with. The main things are, and I mentioned it before in previous videos, is that I like to switch all on any off ball and on ball screens and setting the run play frequency to 100. Also, we have our offense at a focus of pace and space, and we're trying to get shots up quickly, so we'll have a lot more possessions in the game, and that'll give us a better chance of winning. And you could probably notice that setting this thing up takes some time. I mean, we're already close to only having two pauses remaining, so when I'm playing the game, I don't really pause like that. Uh, I really don't find a need to. Any more adjustments I need to make, I could do it in a timeout and we'll just go from there unless I really need to go into the menus and make something happen. So you can see run play frequency set to 100 and the help defense, I set that all the way to zero because I don't want the computer, to, the computer to help on anything and then my opponent gets a wide open three. I'd rather just, okay, if my opponent gets past me on a blow by, then he could have that two-pointer. So my opponent has Kevin Durant at center. So this will be good for Rudy Gobert on the offensive end, but on defense, it's going to be a little bit tough. So right off the gates, we are not looking too good. James Harden comes up with the steal, and now he gets it down low to Kevin Durant. But Kevin Durant decides he wants to back it out, and this is why I say it is going to be a nightmare for Rudy Gobert on defense. So I have to try and change this matchup a little bit more quickly. So you can see I'm back in the menus, but we're playing the game. I'm trying to get our offense to get more shots up and get shooters open because you know, a uh, common theme in the last two videos was that we weren't getting a lot of open or we weren't running plays that, you know, were created for three pointers or three point shooters. My opponent comes back down on the other end, blows right by Rudy Gobert for another dunk. So it's not looking too good. But yeah, we weren't running a lot of three point plays. And I think that really hurt me in the long run in the last two games or even the game where I played with the Atlanta Hawks. So I'm coming out in this game trying to get all my settings right, play calmly, play with some patience, and then look for the best shot available. 
Bojan Bogdanovic hits the wide open three pointer. Don't know what my opponent was doing there, but that's a good sign to see from the Utah Jazz, especially with a deep of a three like that. And we hit it, but it was pretty good so far. So right now, early stages of this game, Kevin Durant pulling up for a three-pointer, gets it to go. KD is just cooking, and I'm pretty sure he's close to his takeover. So I call a timeout. I want to get in my settings and change this Rudy Gobert on Kevin Durant matchup. And we're probably going to put Joe Ingles on KD just so that Rudy Gobert isn't that much of a defensive liability. And I want to keep him in the game because we could abuse Kevin Durant in the post. I mean, he doesn't really have a true center in at the game. So if we need an easy basket, I'm pretty confident in Rudy Gobert abilities to, you know, give us a post spin and then just throw the ball down over Kevin Durant head or Jeff Green or whoever is guarding Rudy Gobert for that possession. So you can see we're in the settings again, making a couple more tweaks and changes. And there's so many settings on NBA 2K, it's hard to, you know, do all of them in a timely manner without taking too much time uh, of the game. But in most cases, until now, I didn't really have to do all these settings, but I don't want to take any chances. And so we're going to be performing these settings for the rest of the GOAT games that we play. So Donovan Mitchell has the ball. Nice crossover by Mitchell. Gets to the rim. Gets the bucket to go. And he is rewarded with one extra free throw. We got a foul on that play. So that was pretty good by Donovan Mitchell. And you know that this is a guy I had high hopes for. I still have high hopes for. But I just really can't seem to play with them. I mean, that first time I played with the Utah Jazz, it was a beast. And that was against the Portland Trail Blazers. But in the last two games against the Trail Blazers, it... His performance was average at best, and I really had a hard time managing his stamina and, you know, getting good shots with him and uh, getting him to convert these tough layups. But my opponent is going right back at me. He still has the lead. He's shooting a pretty high field goal percentage, but we're hanging right there with him. Score is 10-13 with about two minutes remaining in the first quarter, of course. Rudy Gobert, wide open, left in the corner. We've seen that in the last video, but this time, I'm going to take my time. I'm going to try and get to the rim. Back down KD, we get that bucket to go. So that's looking pretty good. Now we have our matchup change. Joe Ingles on Kevin Durant. Rudy Gobert is now guarding Joe Harris, but I'm fine with that. I'm not really too worried about that. We could, you know, close out on Joe Harris if need be. So wide open, that is Bojan Bogdanovic again. Don't know what type of defense my opponent is running, but it wasn't too good to begin with. And especially if he were to play better defense, he could have blown me out in this fourth, I mean, the, in this first quarter, excuse me. Good defense here. We sent the double team for Kevin Durant because I didn't want Kevin Durant to get like a, a running head start and then I have to collapse and then he kicks it off for a three pointer. So I said, we'll send the double team if Kevin Durant is bringing the ball up court. That way we could get the ball out of Kevin Durant hand and then he'll have to work the ball around to the other players and then he'll have to get into his half court offense. So finally he misses a shot and we're going back down the other end. Donovan Mitchell getting past Kyrie and Kevin Durant. Good thing he did not try and swipe. That probably probably would have been a steal. But Mitchell gets the dunk for us. And now we are starting to increase our lead. Kyrie pulling up for three. I like that shot from him because I knew he was going to miss it. Now we're back on offense. We have Joe Ingles open in the corner. But I decide not to shoot it. We're going to be patient here and take our time. I say I want to go back to this Rudy Gobert matchup with Kevin Durant. And let uh, Rudy Gobert eat. But he plays good defense. I probably should have pumped fake because he jumped so early. And I seen it. It. but right here Joe Ingles coming up huge deep three-pointer although wide open he hits that and gets it to go so the Utah Jazz offense is looking very smooth right now we're sending a double team for James Harden this time because I know I was in a good position to guard Joe Harris and Kyrie Irving so now he has to get into his half court offense look at the on-ball defense I play here in the last video, I was stepping up too far forward, but now I knew he wanted to drive with Kyrie. And if he did try and shoot a jump shot, Rudy Gobert has the size and length to contest that shot. Gobert gets to the line, and that's good there. That's going to be, oddly enough, the closing stages of the first quarter. My opponent seems that he had to step away from the game and missed out on these last seconds in the first quarter. So we have the ball. Joe Ingles in the corner. Should be a hittable three, but we don't get it to go. But that's fine because the Utah Jazz offense in that first quarter was amazing. 
So nice little lead. Score is 22 to 13. My opponent seems to have gone off to such a hot start, but the defensive adjustments that we made uh, worked out in our favor. And this game ended with me taking another victory. Like I said, my opponent, it seems that he stepped away from the game and he wasn't guarding anyone, so we got a lot of easy baskets. So it would have been hard for him to come back. And 2K said he had too many penalties, so I just took the win and we improved to 2-0. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.